everybody hello and welcome to popcorn culture my name is ben carlin and i am your host here with me today is my brother jay who will be in every episode i'll be here i'm here today um we're back from texas 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 where we've been for the past four days we got in at 1 a.m last night and i was like i'm not going to the gym in the morning <laughs> no no joshing on that Ooh. front whatsoever i was i was like i was so i was so tired oh my gosh like I, I got home and i felt so bad for my dogs because we had had like our house sitter mm. and they'd like you know gone through and they were there the whole time but like you know they knew we were coming back into town so like i think they left like right around like dinner time or something right but that meant that like basically like from dinner time they would just like you know been like patrolling the house and everything just so like then, what do we do we're all by ourselves right so we walk into the house at like two in the morning and they are like so stoked nice to see us and you know it's like you walk in and you're like i'm so happy to see you but also i I'm so tired. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, can't, I can't go play fetch in the yard right now. But in the morning, in the morning, we'll go, we'll go talk huck some ball. That's right. Were. That's yeah. right. Man, yeah. I got um the, we woke up this morning and I could hear the twins awake in their room and I went and like, you know, opened the door and they seemed like, you know, like, oh, you're home. They like seemed excited to see me that I just went and like I like walked down the hall so they would come like wake up Beth too. And I was uh laying just laying in bed and they go, Is Nana still here? Is Nana gone? And we're like, Nana's gone. They go, Oh, I thought they both just ran out of the room. <laughs> I was like, hey, great, good to see you too. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. And it's so funny because like, you know, we, we, same thing with Addie. She got brought back this morning because we got in so late, obviously. So like, you know, we're, we're so excited to see her. It was like the yeah. first thing. Like as soon as we were awake, it was like, all right, when can, when can Addie get home now? Because we are ready to see her ASAP. And like we walked in and, you know, we've been getting all these tales about how like, you know, she's like pointing at pictures of us and saying like, mama, dada. And she, she like walks in with, Alice's mom, and she's just like, Nana, Nana, Nana. And I was like, What is this? Never mind. What is this? Yeah. It's all right. It's fine. It's fine. It's we'll, fine. We'll, we'll, um, we'll have our moment later, maybe. If you can carve in, carve in a minute for me. Yeah, right, 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 right. And she went and hugged the dogs. Oh, of know? course, she was of course. Excited to see them. Hi, dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dog? Dog? And then she immediately went and got a, a, a bucket of bubbles and brought it to me. So she, at the very least, she wanted me for something. Oh well, that's good. Yeah, you got to open the bubbles. Good, good yeah. at doing bubbles. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. So I still have I still have some job security. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're still good. You're still important. Excellent. For excellent. now. For now. But yeah. So uh, the the past week has been a busy one. It um, has. Here at Super Carlin Brothers, we uh, we do take a one week break in the middle of the year and sort of like a time where like the whole office shuts down and everybody has off and it doesn't have to be like vacation time used and stuff like that. Which yeah, is just a just a mid year break. Mid year break. Take a breather. Um, however, I feel like I. Did not at all take a breather. No I, breathing. Like, this was the thing. I like. I was like, coming in last night at the airport. I think this was like the primary thought, like lodged into my brain. Is I was like, we do this so that we can relax and like have a week to catch our breath right. and like come back in feeling like revitalized and we ready to go it. and like new creative juices flowing, a whole new world outlook maybe. Right. And instead we like, I was like, it is one 30 in the morning and I'm staying in the airport and I'm super tired. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're right. It's like, like you're going to get up in the morning and pretty much need to go and go like full, full court press to like get back into the swing of things. It was like, what did this backfire? Did we did we have like a break and then we used the break to be busy? Right. I mean, not maybe a little. I think it was uh, restful in its in its own way. I mean, That's I think true. Um, yeah, we did. It was uh, the RTX was this past weekend in Austin, Texas, and uh, we were invited to be a part of it. Um, but our part would like the the main thing we had to do was like host a big um, like trivia uh, thing on Sunday afternoon and we arrived in there like Thursday night so we had a significant amount of time to just like play around in Texas and yes. do, just like explore the city and have fun and check out the convention hall and stuff and um, so for the for the most part it just turned into like and I don't I didn't really frame it this way in my brain as like because a lot of times when you go to these cons it's like you spend so much time like behind the scenes in like the the green rooms or like the various lounges that they've set up for the special guests or whatever and or you know you're walking the floor or 
your, uh, you're, you're doing the panels or whatever they have scheduled for you. Yes. But th- this time it was really not like that. It was just like they had, they had like a green room where you needed to like meet to be escorted to whatever you were doing, but we were only doing the one thing. So, uh, the rest of the time it was like, we don't even really need to be here if we don't have to be like, I, I want, I want to go out and see the, the event itself, but also like, you know, we can just, we'll just go explore. We'll just have fun. We can go explore a little bit. Yeah. Th- this is always the, the conundrum. Like, you know, I, I remember this, like in the early, my early aquarium days, like I would go to, it was my favorite thing of the whole year. Like this was like my comic con, but it was the, uh, it was called MACNA, the Marine Aquarium Conference of North America. Of course. Yeah. And it was awesome. I loved it. Honestly, <laughs> like, I mean, you get there and like these coral displays are like through the roof. They're absolutely amazing. And you know, there's just like, oh, there's so much to see and learn and take in. Like, I mean, for me, I would go to like, I would go to all the panels. I would ask questions. I would find like the, the professionals. I'd take pictures of people. Like, right. There was, I had so much on my to-do list and I would come back and be like, I just, it was like going to like college for like a year, but it was like a weekend where right. like aquarium I learning. just learned so much stuff. Yes. But the, the thing that I always felt like about it was like, like the, one of the big things that they would do at the, um, at the dinner that you would go to for MACNA is they would be like, all right, and next year we're going to be hosting it in Denver, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, they show like a huge montage of all the ridiculously cool things that you can do in Denver, Colorado. And I was like, but like whenever I come to these events, I, I am in the convention center. I don't leave the convention center. Right. Like, yeah. You know, like you're, you're attending the event the whole time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I've, I've been to, you know, like throughout those years, I had gone to like Atlantic City and Des Moines, Iowa. And I went to, I went to Denver, Colorado and Dallas, Texas and Florida. And like, you know, like, so every year was like some different cool location, but it's like, and so like I, I went to those places, but each time I went to them, it was like, all I saw was the inside of another convention center, which are right. all almost always the same. And so I, I think that like one of the things I've always aspired to do that we had like a little bit more um, freedom to do on this particular trip was to, and we had the girls with us, Beth and yeah. Alice came, um, was to go and sort of like explore and see the area that is Austin, which which in general is just a really cool place. Yes. Um, like ridiculously good food. Although the I, I like there is the phrase like too much of a good thing. And I feel like I found the outside edge of too much of a good thing on this particular trip. Like in terms of food, in terms of, I would say, yeah, probably in terms of like, of like food and drink, maybe where it was just like, it was like, you were always in a cool place and it was always like a unique opportunity to try like, like a fancy cocktail at this restaurant or like this local beer that like, you'll never have the chance to try again or something. So like, you know, you're, you're in these places and you're, you're being exposed to these things and you want to make the best of it. Um, and, and, and similar, this is, this is like the weird, like cap on the end. We had, we had like the, like the, the strange and very rare opportunity. The second time in my entire life where we got to fly first class, uh, yeah, on, yeah, right. on one of four legs of our trip. So it was from Austin to Atlanta on our way home. Yeah. We had, we had, you know, a little thing there and it was kind of like, throughout the whole weekend we're, we're constantly eating really good food we're, we're like you know having like really like fun stuff and i was like i i remember getting on the plane and being like gosh you know they, they do have like the complimentary drink because you're sitting here and it's like right like it's, it's a, such a rare occasion you should like, be sitting in first class you're like well i gotta take advantage of it right so we we <laughs> yeah. never we never do this <laughs> right ever and so it was is it like, midnight after uh, a week of uh yeah lots of eating and drinking um yes is that going to stop me? <laughs> but yeah, it's like, okay, yeah. I, I feel like I feel like I am obliged to do it. But I literally got home this morning and was like, I am going. I, I I have never done like a juice cleanse or anything like that in my life. But I'm like, maybe I need to. Maybe I need to. Like, I, I hear that they're not as healthy as you think they are. But like, I'm like, I'm I'm going to go and like sweat sometime today. Mm-hmm. I need to like eat fruit. Got to run that treadmill. I'm just going to drink a ton of water. I thought, I've already had like 13 glasses of water today. Nice. Um, I was like, I'm just. I I feel like I literally I got I got to the point where I was like, I just want like a bowl of cereal yeah. you know like or like something bland something boring yogurt you know like i was like i feel like there's been so much good stuff it's like you, but you just can't eat ice cream three meals a day you know yeah yeah absolutely um, not and i'm i know i'm full aware of the fact that this is like the most first world <laughs> problem as it gets like too much of a good thing too but. much of a good thing no but I, I do know what you mean it's like austin or texas maybe in general has like especially like uh has a lot to offer in the way of food in that it's uh really well known for like uh mexican food because it's so close to the border yeah and then it also is really well known for like barbecue right and then there's lots of i mean austin in particular is like a real like um you know it's sort of like a, a portland or Asheville kind of city where it's like keep austin weird so there's lots of just like 
like breweries and people trying lots of interesting things in the culinary world. And so, yeah, I mean, you got You got to get the barbecue while you're there. And it was like, was it? I think it was Friday lunch. We were like, well, should we just go out and, you know, explore the city and find something? And immediately Beth and Alice both wanted to go get like barbecue. Like, let's just do it right away. Let's we're here. Why? Why would we wait? Right. And so we did that on like that was like our first meal out. And we went to this place called Terry Black's, which um, feels like this amazing intersection of like it's like um, it almost seems like a tourist location but at the same time all the locals also go there and like none of the locals are like oh yeah terry black's like "Mm, it's only okay like they're all like no yeah that's pretty awesome yeah 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 (laughs) no it's it it definitely you're exactly right like i always think about this like with the um like that tv show like diners drive-ins and dives you know it's like yeah i think all of us love that thought of finding like the sort of like hole in the wall homespun family owned like you know it's like you want that like 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 you you're so aware of the fact it's like that's like the real authentic experience <clears throat> right in contrast with going to like you know like an Applebee's or something where it's like you know that is something that is like reliably going to be exactly what an Applebee's is whether you're in New York or California or Florida or wherever in the world you might be it's like it's going to be what you expect it to be right um and and so yeah you're exactly right like we we have we have a restaurant and i don't know if this is like a regional chain or or if people would know what it is but it's called mission barbecue and it's probably the closest thing that we have to like terry blacks but it is a chain like yeah you can go do others of them but this is almost what it feels like that was based off of like the original like right you yeah know. it does feel like that when you're in there but it's a total whirlwind you walk in and there's just like there's like a line out the door and like the, the people who work there are very aware of like like the urgency the speed yeah, the like, line I mean, they're, they're, the efficiency like, yes yes it was wild but it was also very delicious but i feel like i ate that meal and i am it is now monday this was a lunch on friday i have been full from my lunch on friday until until this very i know exactly what you mean i've yeah maintained that feeling of like i ate too much at the barbecue place yes yeah and i think that's part of it too though because you're there and again it's like you're trying it's like you i like i personally i was like well i want to try like basically i want to try everything i can right you're like we're probably not going to a second barbecue place so i mean i want to you know i don't know what the best thing here is so i'm gonna try everything right yeah so i was like we'll we'll have some of that and that and that and then you know then you're like well i don't want to waste it it's also some of like the best food i've ever eaten so you're just like oh my gosh this is so anyway yeah we ate way too much um and um yeah i'm just still full from it yeah now i remember last time we went to texas we just i i i, I dubbed uh texas ben as like the only time ben ever eats fast yes i, yeah. I remember seeing in the show notes texas ben and i was like what is texas ben what is texas ben ben who eats fast it feels like it feels like yeah texas ben was back yes is that right <laughs> i was eating fast I, I remember you saying when we were at um the barbecue place uh terry blacks that you were like i feel like the the urgency of like the people on the line and the speed at which they're serving you like it makes making me feel like i need to eat fast like they want you to get through the line fast so you should eat fast so you can get out fast because they got more people and it was like that is how it felt yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah so, so I, that was really funny i wondered i wondered about that that exact thing because you and beth are famously fast eaters well there's no doubt yeah yes i wouldn't even say beth more so than you uh, like i mean she's not wrong yeah it's it is just like we go out to lunch and i'll like look over i'm like how how is it even possible that yeah. th- that you have consumed that quickly um but no it's it's very impressive so i'm, I'm glad i was able to to hold my own excellent um, thank you yes uh but otherwise i mean great great weekend all the way around lots of lots of really cool stuff we got to uh we did like our live trivia event with um uh jack patillo yeah. and uh bk from the podcast annual pass yes uh so that was really cool because like you know we're at like a rooster teeth event and they are like like rooster teeth like like big rooster teeth people yeah and so like you know they they came in like partook with the with like the trivia and we had some like discordians and patrons you know in the audience yeah it was super fun we i mean there were some little colonels walking around rtx as well repping the uh the crew t-shirts from the um from the uh quarterly exclusive merch yes it made me so happy to see it like out in the wild it was like oh my gosh like i feel like i would never run into it the way that I'm running into it right now. I know, but there yeah. It is. You're, you're wearing, you're wearing it. the shirt. This is so cool. This is so fun. Uh, so that was really awesome. Yeah, was, a few people had the uh, the challenge coins. They did. Yeah, they did. Nobody, nobody, uh, nobody, like really uh, called us on it. I even thought about bringing mine. I know. I did trip. too. I was like, I, I, and then when someone pulled it out, I was like, oh no, I should have brought mine. Like, I like. Now, now, I think even one time we were on the convention floor and they were there was like a little impromptu like bar set up where you could like go sample some sort of like local brewery or something. Right. And I was like, I, I was fully prepared to be like, well, 
I don't have mine. Let's go. Well, we, I'll we, go. I owe you a drink. I owe you a drink. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we'll have to. Uh, if you if you were one of the people who did that, I guess that's that's an outstanding invoice that we have with you. Yep. So yep. something to something to keep in mind for for next go round. Exactly. Um, yeah. Now we're just really encouraging. That I, I, know, I know. Like, I know. Yeah, get that like, coin. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna like staple it to my wrist. Or I know, something. right? Like, okay. Now it's with me all the time. <laughs> all the time. All the time. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, no, no, great, great trip to to RTX. But realistically, I mean, over the course of the week, the week that we had off, it wasn't even my only trip. I was also doing yeah. like a little lake weekend. There was a really cool house that we have rented in the past on Clater Lake, and I like our our group loves it. And the people that have like like they like owned the home, they built the home, they decorated the home. They, there's like a a hand built spiral staircase in like the middle of the the whole space and everything and it's just like i feel like the family is like just that that runs it they're like they're not like you know your airbnb investor type of people they just like want to share it i think right. you know it's like like they it makes them proud to like have people come and enjoy it mm -hmm. but so like they don't do like surge pricing or anything so the house costs the same in like january when like nobody needs to be at the lake for any reason as it is like on you know july 4th holiday weekend so it's just like a very reasonable place to stay and it has a dock where i'm able to bring my boat and as i was talking about last week i was i was like i've been doing like my tinkering you know i've been trying wow. to trying to yeah. summon my inner grandpa jack yeah and um you know i was i was like oh man you know like i'm so i'm so nervous i'm so worried i hope it works like i don't know what's going on with it and the the challenging thing you know about a boat especially when it's parked in your driveway is that like as you go through and you make these repairs and stuff like that it's like you really don't have a chance to test to see if any of those repairs worked until oh, you're you're back at the water yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, it's like, I know I did a bunch of stuff for the first time ever. I have no idea if it was the problem. I have no diagnostic experience whatsoever. So it's like, hopefully it works. Yeah. It's I'm like, going to get it on the water and see. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. So, um, you know, I was, I was really like, I mean, it was, it was, it was the most roller coaster weekend tinkering ever. Yeah. So does that like, mean that the boat did not work? <laughs> Not a, not not all the way. Yeah, oh, no, no, not all the way. So, oh, no. but so, I feel like it has almost been like a this like weird almost running gag that like for it, it has felt like when we were growing up there was this like long running gag that like the boat never worked or whatever. But like in recent memory, like even the even before Grandpa gave you the boat, like the last few times I was at um, Vermont. Uh, with with our grandparents and stuff and when he was out taking us fishing or we take the boat out I was like it actually it worked all the time and since he's given it to you it's like worked all the time and it's sort of like it's been like a joke that the boat doesn't work but in reality it has worked for a very long time now that, that's this is yeah. the exact thing I was telling Alice because I was like I was like you know I, we always get out there and like I will talk to the boat straight yeah. up while I'm driving I'm like okay you can do this you can do this you got this okay come on yeah. let's go all right yeah you're working and like you know like when it does like every time I like go out and I'm just like in the boat by myself I'm like, I like, I will like literally like be tearing up most of the yeah. time. Cause I'm just like, it's like, I'm here, I'm out here. It's running. It's smooth. It's like, you know, it's this massive piece to me of like family history. Um, so it's just like, just really, I don't know. It's like, it's such a, it's, it's something that I both like love in general. Like I love being near the water, around the water, interacting yeah. with the water. Uh, and then this also like hails back to like all these memories. And I feel like there's like a lot of like just positivity that like I've been like entrusted with this, like this thing that's been in the family for so long. So there's, there's like a lot going on. It's like a, a huge yeah. emotional, like jumble of things that, that happens each time I'm in it. Um, but I was telling Alice, I was like, I was like, I feel like you guys weren't there when we were growing up with it and like it wasn't it, a guarantee that it was going to run right like it wasn't a guarantee <laughs> that like you know like a lot of times you'd be like in the water to like water ski and you know like you've got like the the life jacket up to like your you know your chin, yeah, to your chin like, and, and you're sort of like shivering yeah and you're, you're scared cold. a little bit yeah like, you haven't done it in a year the right. the the skis are like a little a bit heavier than your feet and you can't quite hold them up right, in the right like, way. Yeah, you're, you're like, like wibbly wobbly. So it's it's a whole thing. And then like, you know, like dad would be at the, like behind the steering and wheel and he'd be like, all right, you ready? And you'd be like, you need to hit it. Yeah. And like, you're like, <laughs> and, like it yeah. wouldn't go. And so like, then, you know, you're like, you're like working up all this courage. And then I it's know. like, there's like this mixed emotion release too, where you're like, you're kind of like, obviously you're excited to be going water skiing, but you're also like nervous about the first time it's going to like, you're going to get lurched through the water yes and you're like and then it doesn't go and there's like this moment of like mixed disappointment and relief right right it's like okay yeah. okay 
yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're but good. also please fix it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, um, so I've been I've been going through all this stuff. I think I talked about last week. I changed all the spark plugs. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I got that got that taken care of. Um, and you know, I, I I had had this like theory that like you know there maybe it was the fuel that was the problem. And so you know, I get out there. Uh, I launched the boat. Brother-in-law Mike is like driving the truck, so he like lowers me back in and everything. And I'm I'm by myself, you know. It's like the sun is setting. The light, none of the lights on the boat currently work at all. So I'm like also slightly worried. It's like holiday weekend, and like there were, you know, um, like like the lake um, police or whatever, like we're patrolling and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get pulled over. Yeah, and right. Uh oh. It's like you know, I I have my license, but you know, I don't I don't have whatever. Um, it's like I understand why you'd be pulling me over. Um, and you know, like and I don't know if it's gonna work. I I, I go to turn the key and it's like vroom, 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 vroom. like you know, it's like really like low RPMs and stuff. It's like not quite hitting. And like Mike's looking at me and he's like. Like, uh-oh. Like, yeah, like Mike knows Mike's been there for long enough that he's kind of like he's like uh oh like, uh, this is going to be the moment this and, is it this is the time and then it just like it like roars to life and smoke comes pouring out of the engine which I think it's supposed to do I don't know maybe yeah. um, you know we're like yes it's working and you know so he's like alright he gives me the thumbs up I pull back you know and I'm I'm sort of like motoring out of like the no wake zone from like the, the boat launch and you know you get to like the open water and I literally I called dad and I'm like talking to him on the phone i'm like dad i have no idea like i mean it, it's either gonna go or it's not gonna go and we're about to find out and so like you know we're pull, I'm puttering out there and he's like all right is, this, is it the moment i'm like it's the moment and i was like all right here we go and i start like laying the accelerator down and it just takes off and i'm like oh my gosh victory i fixed it i fixed the boat like i was like king of the world right yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is the best feeling ever and so i'm like all right dad it's working let me go and you know so i get off the phone and i'm just like i'm like carving s turns through the water and i'm just like on cloud nine and everything and i you know i pull up I even beat mike back to the back to the, like the dock because you know i'm, I'm going by water you're going, going by, by land. yeah you know i call ali as i'm pulling up and she's like what's the word? And I was like, can you run down and like lower the dock? And you know, so she's like, it worked. I'm like, it worked. (laughs) You know? So we're like, we're so stoked. And, uh, you know, so I'm like, all right, this is gonna be great. So the next morning, you know, we get up and I'm like, who wants to go tubing? Like, first thing, you know, let's it's like, go hit the water. I haven't even had breakfast yet. You know, like, get, a, get there ahead of the crowds. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, like we get out there, you know, uh, Mike's Mike's son is uh, 13. And so he hops in, you know, he hops in the back and he's super stoked. So we go out, you know, we're, we're, doing our, doing our tubing and stuff. And it's like, we get like a couple laps around the cove and the boat's like, oh, no. And I was like, no what happened it was like i fixed the i thought i was king of the world i fixed it i fixed it Uh, so then then we have to like like go into they call it like limp mode but it's just it's basically just like the the boat basically will like it'll chug you know drive you know so that you're not like dead in the water right like but it's not but it's not going right you know like the accelerator all the way down it's like going like five miles an hour so Ended up doing the whole thing, like, you know, where we crack the engine open and Mike and I have it up in the lift and we're like going through and we're trying to like figure it out. We're trying this, trying that, going through a million different things. And it was just, it was like literally in the dock. It was like, this was the other thing too. It was like, you know, like I said, working on it in the driveway, it's always this issue because you're in, you're on land, you know? So it's like, you can try something and then you have to wait until you're back in the water. Right. Which to requires, it's going to work. Yeah. Which requires like a whole, you know, at least a half day commitment to get out to the lake, to put the water in and someone needs to, you know, help me and all the rest. There's, you know, I need a couple sets of hands to do it. Uh, but so this is going to be this like amazing opportunity to like tinker with it, drop the boat back in the water, go back out check it out again, see how it goes. You know, we can, we can like, right. we can like test it in real time. But like as me and Mike are working on it, like the boat is lifted. So we're out, you know, we're, we're hovering above the water. So we you know we're dry. We have like the ability to like tinker with it and stuff, but we're underneath a dock and inside of that dock is these two massive swallow bird birds nests right above the motor. Oh no. And so Mike and I are sitting there and we're like tinkering with it. And at some point in time, Mike was like, I think I'm, bird just pooped on me uh. and he's like he like looked at his hand we're like you know we're like looking up above us we're like oh my gosh and then like so we worked on it for like two hours and in that time the birds were literally just pooping on us the whole time oh gross just over oh, and, no. and i was like what uh. is this so like by the, by the end of the trip literally it's like you know eventually you know like we, we had done all of our tank and we'd done all of our stuff we had put like the the cowl which is like the the cover back on the top of the the motor and like over the course of the weekend like as the boat's just like hanging out in the dock i mean there is just like a mountain of bird waste that's piling on the exact spot 
where, where we you need to, to be work. Yeah. I was like, what is happening this right now? This cannot be. A cosmic fates, I felt yeah. like. I was like, is this a message? Is someone trying to communicate with me right now? We also watched Interstellar, so there was a part of me that was like, mm. you know, it's like, is this, is this, is this the moment? Is, right. is, is, is that what you're trying to, is there a message written in the, in the scat? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, so anyway, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite the whirlwind. So I, I have a bunch of theories. The, the last and final thing is that I went through a million different things. I found a broken part, literally pieces of metal that were just rattling at the bottom of the motor. Like, oh, completely had broken free. And it took us a long time to figure out how to put them back together. We eventually did successfully like wove all the nuts and screws and recovered all the pieces and bits and bobs. Wow. That's impressive. And, uh, it was like, oh, this is gonna be perfect. It's going to work now. Had literally nothing to do with it at all. Oh, it was just a different thing that was broken on the motor that, uh, needed to repair. That, That's great. Yeah. So it was like, well, at least we fixed we fixed something that wasn't a problem. That's so annoying when you're like, yeah, you're like one thing's broken and you fix it and it turns out two things were broken. Yes, yeah. yes. And in this case, I think like seven things are broken. So oh gosh, yeah, we're just we're just working through it. But the joke is, is that like our whole lives, our grandpa has always has always used a product called Stable, which is like something that helps keep fuel from going bad while being either stored in a machine that's not used that often or if you have like a like a gas tank or whatever and i in my, i always thought it was kind of like a gag like i always sort of thought like oh yeah grandpa thinks you need stable and everything like how'd you put stable in it you know like, right like it, it always felt like this like like f- funny thing like like as if it was a bit of like a like a voodoo type of product like right a, yeah it's like you know like oh like i i feel like it, it sort of fell in the same vein as like like multivitamins or something yes. where you're just like, it's certainly not hurting you to take them. Right. Yeah. Right. Is it giving you some sort of like profound health benefit? Probably not, but it's not like hurting you. It's, you know, it's okay to take them. It's not going to damage you. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, that, and that is precisely what it felt like. It was just sort of like a general cure all for all things at all times. It was just like, you put stable in it. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, and so anyway, so I'm, I'm going through the whole weekend. I'm doing the whole thing and, uh, we get, we get home and Alice's dad is like, you know, a gearhead. He has like his own like little race car and stuff and he works on tractors and you know, he's very like hands on with like mechanical type stuff. And Mike works with him a couple days a week. So Mike goes and he was telling him all about our woes and Mike texts me. It's like, uh, her father-in-law, he was like, you know, did, did, did we try putting stable in it? And I was like, son of a gun. No, no. Not stable again. Is it, is this a real thing? Do I need to put stable in my motor? I know. Well, it's like one of those things where I think, um, yeah, I certainly, the first time I think we ever, I think I ever heard about stable was like in, into my like late teens or early twenties or something. Sure. Like sure, having sure. been to the lake and with grandpa near the boat, near all like lawnmowers and stuff like my whole life, no one has brought up this product to me at all and suddenly he's acting like it's the most obvious thing in the world and everyone needs to do about it and it's incredibly important and you're like okay all right um but like it's like this it felt just like there's no way i got this point to my life and didn't know about this otherwise very important fuel additive that right. you're supposed to do. Right. Like I, I, gu- I guarantee other people listening right now, 12 people know. Yeah. Like what stable is or, or to use it in any capacity. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I think like since then it occurred, like it, you know, it did feel like a four, but like it, I think I, I started to understand that like it is, it is something you do need to use. Like, uh, especially I think I've had some lawn mowers where I did not use stable and you come back the next summer and it's just like, uh, this doesn't work now or something. And it's like, right. that's probably what the problem was. Um, so I think it is. And I think the reason more people don't know about it is because I, I don't know if you would have to use it in like your car or something, but, uh, like well, it, you drive your car, yeah, every but day. yeah, you don't yeah. need to because you use all of the fuel in your car so quickly. Yes. Yeah. That, to the point is, where it's not regular, but I don't know like if you were like, yeah, I, 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 you know, fueled up my car in, uh, you know, September. And then I, I flew down to the Bahamas for three months and, uh, you know, I'm not coming back until next April. So I, I may definitely put stable in it, you know, like, I don't know if that's a thing. I, but, I would say more so a thing at that point in time. Yeah. If it even occurs to you to like do something for your vehicle to like protect it while it's sitting, sitting, not being used. Anyway, this is typically a case for anything that has a motor is that thing. Motors like to be used. Yeah. Um, so, so, so if you don't, 
Yeah, get some stable. Get some, get, get some stable, you know. Ask your grandpa. You showed up for the for the deep cut fandom conversation, but you stay for the small engine repair tips. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Deep engine repair tips. Okay, anyway, so ben. it feels like, it feels like a really good time for a transition. All right. Transition. Well, Ben, I had my own uh, Fourth of July antics. I didn't go to a lake or anything, but we did have a, a, a like a, a bit of a staycation, I suppose. It seemed like it. Yeah, it seemed like it. It was. Um, it was quite. I I found it pretty relaxing, really. I mean, it was just like. I mean, it was more. I mean, it was really just being at home instead of at work, and so it was mostly just you know Beth's Beth's schedule didn't really change at all. She just still had all the stuff she would normally do with the kids, except that I was also there. Sure. So sure. it was mostly just kind of helping out with that, but like. Um, Luke had nature camp all last week. So awesome. that was fun. So I, you know, I was driving him out to nature camp each day. And then and there was like a, a mother's morning out at our uh, church, which I think should be called parents morning out. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> whatever. Look, when I was dropping people off, there was me, another dad, and another mom dropping kids off. So more dads were there when I was there than moms. Solid representation. Solid representation. Just saying church. Yeah. Uh, parents morning out. Come on. It's 2023. Uh, anyway, not important. You should write um, a letter. I will. Maybe I will. I'll be like, excuse me. I, you know, this is like one of those, like, un- I, I I don't mean to sidetrack you at all. I think it is, I, I've realized the number of times I said, like, you should write a letter. Yeah. But, like, I feel like maybe one of my life ambitions, one of my bucket list items yeah. is to start a letter writing campaign. To actually sort. do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, just like, <laughs> this like, feels like an extreme, oh my gosh, this feels very, like, uh, chaotic neutral sort of mission. Right, right, right. Just like, be like, like, like a guys? small correction to something where it's like. Right. Look, <laughs> oh I, no. let me, let me leverage my, my power as a podcast host to have a lot of people write a lot of letters about a small thing to a yeah right, <laughs> to right, a yeah. situation so we gotta find our small problem to solve right yeah. yeah i like this i like this anyway so but yeah so you're you're doing your your staycation stuff doing my staycation stuff it was um it was i think i, I found like the same sort of relaxation i kind of felt like i felt at the beach where it was like I'm not really necessarily aiming to do a lot of relaxing here. It's like the whole, like, I'm just, all I really want to do on this particular um, days off is just like hang out with the kids and just, you know, be present with them. And like, that's mostly what I did. And it was a lot of fun. Yes. Um, so, you know, we weren't doing anything particularly crazy. I think we went to the trampoline park one day, which they all absolutely love, of course. Does that completely wear them out? Like, are they just yes. zonked from yes. it? Yeah. I, I mean, it's extremely uh, tiresome place. I mean, you're, you can't be doing anything that isn't exercise, you know, almost right. by design, which is great. Um, of course, I always like I personally love going to the trampoline park, too, because I just jump as much as they do if not more you know i'm like i'm out there i'm doing it but um the difference is that they're five and three and i'm 35 does so, does any, that, that works out well it does three work out five, well three and five, hey, five, yeah. is there anybody that uses the trampoline park as their gym oh there's gotta be okay there's like uh, I, I this occurs to me like like we have our rock climbing gym and we talked a lot about going rock climbing in the past. And like <clears throat> rock climbing is one of those things that like for a long time, I would have thought of like, like, Oh, let's go rock climbing tonight as like, like comparable to like going bowling tonight right. or something. Like I don't regularly go bowling. However, I quite enjoy yeah. bowling every now and again. It's a fun thing to go do precisely. But then like when you like, when we got into climbing as like an activity, like it was the place where we exercised, like we were there like often and hard like, yeah you know and and so I, I i'm always curious when i hear about the trampoline park i'm like man if you went to the trampoline park like three four days a week i bet you would be just absolutely shredded <laughs> oh there's no doubt i mean uh i don't know if this particular one like offers memberships even okay it just okay. seems like they should it if does they, feel like they don't should. but um, letter writing campaign <laughs> letter writing campaign yeah <laughs> the trampoline park. here we go <laughs> memberships please yeah. at reasonable costs Come on now. Members only hours. Nice. It's going to be great. I yeah. I love it. I love it already. Uh, but certainly there must be people who go. There must be trampoline parks where there is membership and you can just go regularly. And because like I bet there's like tumbling classes and stuff like that. Where <laughs> yeah, you could do absolutely. It, yep. Um, where you could like actually practice flips and spins and stuff. Whereas this is much more like recreational. Just like kids go crazy. Jump around. Do whatever. Sure. 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 Yeah, sure. Which yep. is also fun. Um, 
Yes. I, I remember in high school, there was like a, um, there was a girl I, I was talking to, I think as like a sophomore or something like that. And she, she had come from a different school and a couple of her guy friends from that school were like really into like, and here's the, here's the issue is like, I don't even know what, like, th- but on my space back in those days, like, like pre, mm. you know, like mainstream internet, like pre Facebook, all the rest, like, but they would have like gifts of themselves doing like, like they would like run and jump on like a springboard ground and do like a triple corkscrew and land on the ground. And yeah. I was just like, what, what gym is this? Cause it didn't look, didn't, it didn't look like gymnastics and it didn't look like some type of like, like karate taekwondo type of thing. Right. Either. It was like, but like, is, is it tumbling? I think it sounds like tumbling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's well, yeah. So anyway, that's pretty much my entire life. Ever since I saw those gifts of those guys from like 2004, it was pretty much like, well, if, if I could only just do that in my life one time and gifify it, then I'd be done. I'd yeah, be good. yeah. That was it. I remember. Okay. This is a, just a random memory that has surfaced. I think I remember the girl you're talking about. And I want to say there was a, a night we were at a house and there was a pool and we were like just going off the diving board into it. This, I mean, that completely seems like like circumstances that could track. Anyway, yeah, I'm trying not to like name names or anything. Okay, but um, I wanted to, we were there, and I think uh, and I remember going off the going off the diving board, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna try and do. I'm going to like try and do uh, like a, a flip, but like not bend my body at all. Just like say completely like rigid the whole way through. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah, like yeah. just. Yeah. Like that's, that's what I'm going to try and do. And I did. I jumped and I was like, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. And I stayed completely straight. And I think I like spun while I was doing it and like landed in the water. And I came up and they were like, how'd you do that? Like that was like a perfect pike. And I was like, a what? And like they told me like I had done like some sort of maneuver that like was like a, a thing you could try to do on purpose. Purpose. Oh, amazing! And, and I just like thought of it in my brain, and I did it. And it, but the the thing was, the moment they told me what it was and that it was a thing, I could never recreate it again. <laughs> it's like, oh, like, nope, too hard, like, too yeah, hard. Like, yeah, I was like, now that I'm really trying, I have no idea. When it was just like a funny idea in my head, it like it just came naturally. But now that I'm thinking about it, I can't do it at all. <laughs> I, I have this with literally just everything ever. Yeah, it's, I feel like this is like the entire thing. It's like I can't, I can't. Uh, like prepare for something and rehearse it and have it go well. It's like if I organically fall backwards into it and it just turns out to be okay, then it's yeah. like that's that's my sweet spot. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I can only cool. accidentally. Uh, I yeah. can only accidentally perfectly spin through the air when I'm not trying to. Okay. <laughs> exactly. You understand exactly what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So anyway, but that's really funny. Yeah. So, uh, Jay the Pike Carlin. <laughs> Jay the Pike Carlin. That's what they called me for like thirty seconds that one night. Man, so impressive. So. Impressive. Massive. Yeah. Uh, um, what else was I going to say here? I was trying to think um, just, yeah, more for the more, more staycation fun. Yes, you are. Yes. You, you did the trampoline park. Yeah, we did the trampoline park. We, um, uh, oh, this is, this is something I've wanted to do for a while. We, my backyard has like a, um, like as has a, a small hill in it. Yes. So a, a gentle incline, a gentle incline, but it's not that gentle, right? It's fairly like, it's sort of, uh, it, it's flat for like most of it, but then off to the right and up to the fence, there's like a, a, so a, a short, but steep hill. Okay. Short, but steep hill. And so, uh, I remember when we were kids, there was a few occasions where we'd be at like a, a soccer party or something or like a the, some some rogue uh, barbecue or something. And someone would just get out this giant like a massive tarp or like I think once upon a time that was like a, a uh, the canvas from like a billboard or something. That's what I always remember. Yeah. yeah, like they were like a realtor or something like that. Like when their billboard had been taken down, they were just given this huge sheet yeah. of like rubber vinyl. Yeah, but then you just lay it down on top of the hill and suddenly you have like a way bigger, way more effective slip and slide that is just like awesome. Yes, because the thing about a slip and slide is that like you know, it's very narrow. You got to have some pretty good aim. There's sure. a bunch of you know, and if you don't, sometimes you'll hit the stick stakes off to the side and that can hurt and you have to go flat. This is more like you just have a giant man land made water slide man land made man land made. Exactly. I love it. Yeah. So I went out and I bought a, uh, a giant it's like a 20 by 30 foot 
tarp and I laid it out in the backyard and it was like during quiet time. I was so excited. I set up the whole thing in the backyard. I like weighed it down. I staked it down. And then the kids came out and there's just this huge tarp in the background in the yard. And I'm like, all right, who's ready to go? And we started spraying the hose. It was so much fun. Yeah, the videos they, looked amazing. The, yeah, they were just having an absolute blast. Nate, Nate, especially, he was like my little champion. He would go up to this, like the way my yard works is that the further you get closer to the house, the steeper the hill gets. So you could start like maybe more towards the garden side, the gentle slope. He went right to the steepest part of it and he would just like jump as high as he could and like belly flop, stomach first, face first, like land on it, and just go flying down the slide. I was <laughs> just like, dude, you're having that. It's like such pure joy. That's amazing. Yeah, that That's was amazing. really fun. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to set that up again. The danger about doing the tarp in the backyard like that is that it will quickly kill your grass. It Did you have a giant square? There's not. Yeah. Um. The next morning I was like, Beth, we got to get out there pretty quick because I don't want it to like kill the grass. And uh, we, we went to like the afternoon and we like moved, we like flipped it over to dump all the water off and then like let it dry before we like wrapped it up so we didn't have some like mildewy tarp or something. That's a yeah, smart yeah. call. Yeah. But uh, I did come back from from Texas and there is like a, a somewhat brownish patch back there, which I think part of it is that like clover has really taken over a huge chunk of my yard. Okay. And I think clover in particular is susceptible to like quick death. Or okay. something <laughs> because okay. like I noticed um, before this, we just had, like a splash pad and it was sitting on a patch of only clover. And like that was only for like a couple hours. And like when I moved it, it was like it, everything had turned brown. And I was like, wow, that was fast. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So interesting. I don't know if like the when you hit those little like white flowers, if they're just like quickly like, nope, we don't have much uh, constitution and we'll just you know, we go down in like one punch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fully, fully <clears throat> stacked in some other category. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're good at spreading around. But if you like uh, just gently graze us that's it that's we're it. done that's it yeah okay yeah. okay um, um, so there's that that's amazing yeah no yeah. i mean the the old the old backyard slip and slide is really i feel like that's like that's just pure magic and it's like yeah. it's such cheap setup it's like tarps not expensive so like what in like dawn dish soap yeah usually that's basically like, yeah, yeah that's just, exactly what i had was yeah. the dawn dish soap yeah that was super fun too of course everyone wants to fight over the hose and they want to use that eventually and then they're just spraying each other and you know Naturally. then it starts to devolve but <laughs> right 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 but yeah. but it's, it's but it's a blast but it's a then. blast in the meantime yeah um, and then, oh, my garden is also starting to totally explode yes. as well, which yeah. is pretty fun. Yeah, I came do you, back. Do you have crops? I have, I have some crops. Like when I left, I had like, um, like two, I had like two cucumbers that were up and I came back and there was like six or seven of them now. And I'm like, oh man, it's like re- everything's just going really fast now. Amazing. This is exciting. Um, so all of like, I feel like my tomatoes are about to start, blue, uh, you know, coming, uh, coming through, which will be exciting. And then I did have one potential, uh, for scare. Even. I know I came back and like, I noticed that I have like my little, uh, my little door with the fence there. And I noticed that the bottom section had not been like properly secured to the nail. Oh. So there was like a light, um, like opening. And I was like, now it's still closed. But like, if you were an inquiring critter, you could potentially have like weaseled your way through it. And I'm like, probably not like no one's come through yet. But then I'm like going through and I noticed some like particularly big weeds that had scrap pop, yeah, popped up while we were in Texas. So I was like, let me just yank these out of here real quick. Nice. Because nice. they seem nice and easy and the, the ground is moist. But then I looked over at my carrots and I was like, some of the tops of my carrots have been nibbled. Bazooka Jack. Bazooka Jack the, found the. But then I'm like, did now did did they like squirm their way through and break the fence th- free, or did they just find a a unfortunate opening, Jay, or not? Life finds a way. Life finds a way. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully, I made sure to secure it nice and tight today. So I'm like, hopefully, it was just that it wasn't latched, and that Bazooka Jack doesn't know his way through the fence, and this is gonna be the last of it. And we're not going to have any more problems. Last of it or the yeah. last of us. Oh, pff, the last of us. We're about to find out. <laughs> last of it, yeah. Yeah. There's just going to be mushrooms out there. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Very dangerful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. it, I, I mean, it sounds like it sounds like it was a very fun and productive staycation week for you. It was. Yeah. I had a lot. I, it, I, had, a, I had a lot of fun with it. And then Texas was a lot of fun. So great overall uh, week off. Oh, this is another thing. We sort of mentioned... 
Um, what were we just talking about? Bazooka Jack. Oh, you were talking about MySpace and stuff oh, like yeah, in yeah, the yeah. olden days. Well, it is so funny that like it feels like MySpace is the olden days, but just this past week there is like a a, a, a new horizons breaching on the social media front. There is. There is. It feels like you can't not talk about it. I know. Um. So uh, of course this is in reference to Threads. 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 Threads what? dropped over the past week and like a immediately became like the like most successful so- social media app launch like since Facebook or something. Yeah, it was and like it's so, by Facebook. So and, yeah, by, or by by Meta. By Meta. Um, I know this is this is really it's kind of like an interesting conversation to be sure because Threads is 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 basically like the the at least I don't even think it's the only um competitor is there like another one called like Ma- mastodon, mastodon or something mastodon, i think yeah. so i i d- i've never been on mastodon as i've i i want to say i don't i don't know i think mastodon is like maybe like tailored or like created for like a like a specific political viewpoint Okay. Or something, or maybe I, I don't. I don't know if that's actually. I don't know if that's accurate. I don't know anything about Mastodon. Okay. Okay. But, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll leave it at. We we'll leave not, it at. We know that Mastodon exists as a other place where that is similar to Twitter. That is, yeah. Exactly. So this is this is like kind of like a fascinating development in this conversation as well because like um, I, I like I of course I have been off social media now for over a year entirely yeah. so um like with with these small exceptions of like when we when we go on like a work trip like like when we went to disney for example for the tron event i was i was operating the carlin brothers instagram but like i did i did absolutely and precisely zero scrolling the entire time but like as per you know like wanting to make sure that we're we're doing our, our due course to our uh partnership with disney i, I was i was like right you know, yeah like doing the, the necessary like stories or posts or whatever but um otherwise i have done a really good job of not being on it in any way shape or form yeah. which has been awesome uh but so so for me threads coming out is kind of like one of these things where it's like i am i am a mere bystander of what is otherwise i know like a bit of a social phenomenon uh or conversation to be had because even as far as being off of social media but even before i got off of like instagram and tiktok and facebook and all the rest i had been off of twitter already for like right. a year and a half before that yeah um so i i because i felt like twitter was turning into a place that it was just like every time i opened it i would like walk away feeling just like despair and sad and like uncomfortable and right like, like i felt like it like filled me with anxiety and and worry and it was one of these things where it was just like 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 to its credit you know uh like tiktok for example like i never like tiktok would waste my time yeah. like i would go and like and spend too much time scrolling on it and stuff like that but like i never left tiktok feeling worse about myself right whereas like i felt like when i left twitter it's like that's how i felt right and so like when i heard when i heard threads was coming about it was kind of one of these things where it was like it's interesting to know that there is a massive contender to Twitter. And it seems like there's been like a lot of people who are not happy with Twitter for reasons that are separate from my own reasons. Yeah. It's been really interesting because like on the first, just few days of threads, which I am on, by the way, if you want to go follow me just at John Kerlin, nice, you know, nice, my, nice, my nice. regular handle right over there on threads. It's been, uh, it's fun. Um, it has been like so much of the early days of threads have been people just like threading about, um, the like how clean it feels over here or like how like non-toxic or how like fun it feels or like there's like less pressure or less eyes or whatever um and that's very true like if you're on there it is like a much like cleaner free air experience and i've been uh just enjoying it um myself uh it does it does feel there's like like but at the same time it's like i don't know like what about it is making it different than Twitter because it is effectively the same app. Um, there's like, I don't know if there's like certain, like if it's the, the algorithm is feeding you stuff differently. I don't know if just like masses haven't truly adopted it. And once they do, it'll be, you know, it'll inevitably become like the toxic waste zone that Twitter became. It doesn't do trending topics, which is a thing. Th- that um, is I don't know if that is like, a um, if like trending topics was like a, a something on Twitter that like, pointed conversations in negative directions or like like or like helped like um 
move conversations in certain ways where it's like, oh, this is trending. Maybe I should go talk about that then. Right. Like, like they like because something was getting buzz, it like forced it to get more buzz or something. Yeah, no, I, I could I could I could totally see that because I think like, you know, if, if, if a world event happened, like you get like a little bit of like confirmation bias, I think, or, or maybe that's not even the right word. But like like if an event happened, <coughs> then you were to like log into Twitter and see that that event was also trending, then like almost immediately what you'd be able to do is discover by clicking on like whatever, you know, trending topic it may be, you can almost always immediately find the two sides of the argument. Yeah. It's like, these are people who are for this thing for these reasons. And these are people who are against this thing for these reasons. But it's like, it almost, yeah, but even that though, it like make, it like forces divisiveness a little bit. It, it makes like, a battlefield. Yeah. It's like, here's a topic, here's the two sides or whatever. So it's just like, it like suddenly like a thing you didn't even know about right. is now like, present and you need to have an opinion about it right and you need to and if you're going to tweet about it you need to be like staunchly behind that opinion or something in like a very black and white kind of way yeah and that i feel like it, it, yeah it like maybe it was like it, it i can see why you would want that and like especially in like the early days of twitter you're like let's oh wouldn't it be cool if everyone on the app if like a bunch of people were talking about the same thing if we could be like this is what's really popular in the whole world right now so you can just be in tune with it like that's such a cool thing like it sounds good on paper in practice especially nowadays i feel like it is like um that not been as effective you know like either it's about something that is really divisive or it's just i find a lot of times at least my trending page is just like a new trailer drop for a thing or you can like even pay to have stuff like appear on the trending tab sure so it just feels like that but it's interesting to me that you dropped twitter so long ago because like a lot of the people on threads it seems like like they're jumping ship because like Twitter since like Elon Musk purchased it has been like on this weird, not weird, like this um, predictable downward spiral and like all these weird decisions keep coming through where you, you lost the blue check mark and then you could pay for the blue check mark and then the blue check mark was back, but also a gray check mark was the real blue check mark and like it, it, all yeah, these it, weird things. And yeah, right. it's, it's like you, you need to um, in, in some way, shape or form, like when stuff like that is like so defined and has meaning in some capacity, it's almost like like by by turning it all on its head a little bit it, yeah. is, it can like become very confusing i think i also saw that there was like a recent thing where like there's a max number of tweets that you can like read oh. per day mm -hmm. um which on some level like there's a part of me that's like you know i i think like you know a screen time limit not the worst thing in the world like but you, but you make that decision for yourself like that's not yeah. a decision necessarily that we've made by someone else on your behalf so like there's a part of me that's like i can understand like limiting your screen time and seeing like the general benefits of it just as someone who has like left social media and like realized that like looking up and around in the world maybe is like been better for me as like an individual yeah but that was a choice i made right <laughs> you know like as as an individual person um but those are the types of things I think can like absolutely start to cause like, you know, like some it, it breaks down the way in which people are accustomed to interacting with something in a way that can like deter them from it entirely. Right. And so what what I'm really curious about as as we go forward is that like, you know, if you were to go through and and like be invited to like a 50s themed party or a 70s themed party or an 80s or 90s themed parties. These are all decades of time where like the proposed zeitgeist was recognizable enough that there is a way to go and embody a decade of time. Right. Right. And so like, I, I think in a lot of ways it's like, and I mean, they're not like perfect edges in the same way that like, you know, th there's not like overlap between like, like different generations of people. Like, you know, you might be a millennial that has like a lot of, you know, air quotes, Gen Z characteristics or, or, right. the, you know, like the other way, you know, moving forward as well. Um, so it's like, you know, it's not like there's not like overlapping, you know, information. It's not like, you know, when, when 1980 hit the seventies were hard stop over or anything. Like right. That. But, but like, you know what I mean? Like if you were to go to a seventies theme party, you would have some idea of like what it meant to have existed during the seventies, like what that looked like, what it felt like, you know, and, and all the rest. But like, as we shift through, and I call them paradigm shifts basically, but like, you know, as, as the world has established a zeitgeist for a period of time, we'll call them decade long chunks. So there's like the 20 teens and we're kind of like finding ourselves like into the meat of the, 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 um, the twenties 
at this, yeah. at this point in time. It's like if you were to look at the 20 teens and see like the advent and the growing popularity of social media networks at large, you know, whether whether that's going to be Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or TikTok or Vine or, or any of those things like like at their peak, they all they all seem like indestructible yeah for, for all intents and purposes like i remember um like and we, we've seen the same thing happen like going to a lot of the cons related to this this kind of like ecosystem social you know whatever world that we're in where like for a while it was like all youtube and then it was like oh man there's like a pretty big vine booth over there it's like man this whole event is basically just viners at this point in time right next year vine was gone and right. it's like now it's youtube again and it's like oh there's a little tiktok booth over there and it's like now it's all tiktok right you know? and it's like it's like you know you're you're watching like empires like rise and fall like it reminds me of the the um the opening of the tv show silicon valley yeah like there's this animation where you see like like different buildings like kind of go up and come down and then like right. change banners and like you know like be reformatted as as silicon valley has changed right over you know, time over yeah. over time yeah and so my my big curiosity with something like threads is if you're going to take the grand experiment that was twitter and look at what it did for the world and even like the the adoption of a tweet being a um, like verifiable piece of information that an important figure may have said or stated or like a way to communicate your beliefs on the world. Like, yeah, like it might be like, you know, CNN might be reporting like Senator so and so said this, you know, and like they like the tweet. Like in the beginning, it what people would have been like a tweet. Like tweets don't count, right? You know, it's like when it, when they have a press conference and they have a microphone and a group of journalists, right? Surround, that counts. A tweet doesn't count. And then it was like, then eventually, like tweets did count. I know. Then it's like, yeah, I I, I think that this was like a. Uh uh, so I, in sports, I feel like this is always a thing, like because it was such a way to have such easy access to what like any given athlete or person of any notoriety was thinking about a specific situation. Yes, that like could communicate to the masses, and you could communicate directly back with them. Right, you know, like not necessarily they would respond back, but like you, like you know, if Michael Jordan put out a tweet, you you Ben could respond to it, and he could read something you wrote to him. Right, you know, like conceivably, probably not, probably some sort of manager or something. Exactly. But, yeah. But yeah, I understand your point entirely. But so the the question that I would have as we as we press forth is like, you know, it, it's like what what will be the overall evolution? Like I, I can't imagine a world where 100 years from now social media is exactly as we knew it during the 20 teens. Oh, I know. You're right. You're like, right. Like will will the day come where you're like, oh, God, remember Twitter? Right, right, yeah. right. Yes. But like, but not even like an artifact of the past, but like like the the wild, wild west of um like social communication during the 20 teens is, yeah. is sort of like what I would say, where it's like, it's like, you know, it was it was sort of like, and I'm not saying like pro regulation or anything like that. Like I don't have an opinion on this. Like I don't have a stance or a position or, or like an agenda that I would be even like personally thinking like, well, this is the right way to do it. The que- what I, what I would assert is just that it will change and something will happen. Yeah. And eventually Twitter, like the, the freedom or, or uh, ability, the flexibility, the openness, like whatever, whatever the words might be that best describes it will eventually feel like, wow, that was allowed to happen for a whole decade. No, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. um, in, in some capacity. Um, and so I'm curious to see, you know, if, if threads ultimately becomes Twitter 2.0, what does that turn into? Or is, is it almost like, you know, sometimes like people describe like exiting a relationship as like an ability to like become a new version of yourself. Like you almost like encapsulate the version of yourself who you currently are with this person you're with. And then it's almost like, you know what? Like once like once I wasn't like confined or whatever, I was able to like sort of like make this change or or make a big leap or, right. or, or grow as a person in a way that like maybe like I was having a hard time figuring out how to do before. Right. And the question is whether or not like if if we left something like Twitter and go to something like this. This is just assuming that this ends up being the next big thing. Um, do we take that with us? Do we, do we, as we press forth, like look at this, this new Oasis as like, as like grounds to be built up beautifully or, or does it, or will all things eventually point North? Will all things eventually find like, is there like a, like an attraction that, that these networks have where it's like at some point in time, and I would even argue this is part of the reason I left Instagram is because I used to say that Twitter used to make me feel bad when I left it. Yeah. 
And I would say that Instagram for a long time was always just like fun and inspiring and interesting and cool. And then eventually I would say like, you know what? Instagram is making me kind of unhappy to look at. Like I feel like maybe for different reasons. Yeah. But like maybe it is making me unhappy, but like TikTok doesn't make me feel that way. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm on TikTok, just fun. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like, I don't know if there's like a, like a, a glowing golden age that all new networks have where it's sort of like for a while, it's like people are just using this for fun reasons. Right. Like, you know, right like now it's just fun. It's just fun. Yeah, yeah. Like right now there's not like, you know, prom- as far as I, I don't know, I haven't, I don't think I've seen any like promoted threads or something where it's like, oh yeah, this advertiser was able to pay to have their thread appear in your feed or anything. Like I, I, I s- haven't seen that at all, which I suspect will not last. Well, I, I think I saw that it won't be monetized until it reaches 1 billion users. Oh, okay. Uh, but I, I, that, I mean, that was like something I read this morning on like a headline. So like, I don't know how absolutely like carved in stone that particular rule is mm. or like, you know, talking about one of the most successful like app launches of all time, it had like millions of signups, but not hundreds of millions of signups, at, yeah. at least, you know, in that those opening reports of like how popular it was. Right. And like to reach a billion, like a, like one billion is a massive is a massive number. Right. Yeah. So if, so, if yeah, it does seem like it could be a while before they get to a billion. Right. That's but ultimately not impossible. Not impossible. I mean, yeah. it's, it's like what, like twelve and a half percent of the world population that's so, a lot it's a lot of people to be talking to it's a lot of people to be talking to yeah so. yeah yep. um, but so right now it does feel like there's just it's like a lot less crowded um it's been i've been enjoying it uh, i've just been i feel like i do feel like i'm using it maybe like the way i initially used twitter when i got it in like 2009 like much more just like fun ways to like interact with more just with like people i'll just what what's a good thread mm, tweet or not tweet thread <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Boom. send it out there. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see like how it grows or changes over time, or if it'll really stick or whatever. But uh, the other thing is that like yeah, so like I feel like it's interesting that you you jumped ship on Twitter so long ago just because of like the toxic nature, whereas now people seem like maybe the reason they're disenchanted is because of like all the new changes with Twitter. Right. right. But it's like I don't think I think you were more on track. It's like the the thing is like y- you could be. I think a lot of people became really disenchanted with Twitter, but there was just nowhere to go. And it was like, well, there's not I don't like where what am I supposed to do? Because like I do have a lot of followers on here and like this is like an established space and it's like there's just not really another option. And if I want to like talk to these people or keep up with what's going on, like this is where the people are. So I right. like I'm sort of forced to use it. Um, but now it's like, there's another option. It's like, Oh, thank God. There's another option. Right. Oh my goodness. And it's like, it's actually like, you know, seems like it's catching on quickly. So, um, there, yeah, there's been, I think a lot of people have been like disenchanted with like the toxicity of Twitter. And I, there's been a lot of like people promoting, like, just use that mute, mute button, like crazy. Like, don't, don't let the toxic in, you know, whatever. Right. Like right, if right. you're not, you don't want to see it, just get rid of it right now. Don't be, you know, like, what can we do to keep this space clean <laughs> kind of thing. And so that would be the ultimate, <laughs> that would be the ultimate question is, is whether or not like, like clearly there's a jump ship type of mentality that's happening. And, and I, from, from what I can tell from like the, the like brief over the shoulder that I've seen, seen from you seems like, a lot of people that like we would we would regard as like peers within this like interspace mm-hmm. seem to have have basically been like on board with yeah and um which is cool to see the question is whether or not like you know d- does this become like will it have its own predictable life cycle right and and this this will be like the thing I'll be I'll be anxious to see is like do are we able to start fresh like turn a new page everything is clean, wide open spaces, like plenty of room to grow and will grow because it will be great for, for a while, while this enthusiasm is here for it. But then, um, like a decade from now, again, to kind of use those like chunks of time as like a, like a, a a way to measure this movement Mm -hmm. is almost like what, what does it become then? Or do we find that the ship 10 years from now is once again overcrowded and once again we need a new one yeah i mean it's very possible right so yeah and and that's where i say like i feel like as as like these levers get pulled and as we discover more and more and more about like the the effects on like what works over time what doesn't work over time and the, the realization that there could be predictable patterns to be followed is almost like like do the people then in charge of those things do things to uh prolong the lifespan of it because i mean you're talking about like multi-billion dollar like entities at this point in time yeah like like mass adoption by 
you know, the public. It's it's a it's an information source. It's a news source. It's you know, like it does a lot of yeah. important functions for society. Um, wh- what does it look like as it grows nearer to like? too perfect or, or how do you elongate the, the grace period? Yeah. I have no idea. I don't know what it'll be. And it's like, you're right. I think it'll be so interesting to see yeah what, like what we look back on this time period as, because like, I know like when we were growing up, like, yeah, there wasn't social media, but there was like instant messaging and yes, you know, yeah. you know, it never occurred to me that instant messaging would basically fade out and then disappear entirely to where not only can you not log into aim anymore, they just deleted it. You know, it's right. just gone. Like you couldn't, you couldn't log back on for funsies. If you wanted to, you cannot access your screen name anymore. Right, like it's just, gone. it's just gone. Right. And it's like that, that is crazy and almost unbelievable for the amount of time and use, you know, I put into it as a, teenager right right you yes know. but in, in, so that's an interesting one so yeah if you want to track a lifespan so one of the things i would have thought was very interesting about aim back in the day and, and this could probably apply to like just casual texting as well but like i remember when i first got onto aim and i was learning like like people were having to explain to me like what brb meant because yeah. it was just like i don't know what that means are like rofl or yeah. you know like there, there were all the the little like like things but then like there was also like another hidden language like i felt like through text-based communication i was very i was at some point in time as time went on and definitely not in the beginning but eventually like there were subtle cues that you could send that would indicate like how you were actually feeling through text so mm-hmm. like in the beginning you might say hi you know and like you'd be like hi how's it going what are you up to not much what about you and it would be like a conversation that would go on from there and then eventually it was like okay you need to say like hey yeah not high right because high almost came across as like either like reserved or bashful or cautious or sad yeah. especially if it was like a lowercase high or high mm. period you know it was like there's there's all these like little like strange small subtle things that you could apply to like that introductory greeting to the point where like i could eventually get to the point like where if i was like messaging like a friend or a girlfriend or something at the time it like within like two messages i'd be like is everything okay like i would know right that fast yeah i and mean even like that i remember like the the timing of responses and stuff yes yeah, yeah. it could be like a thing like you you could get like a real feel for it. you know there wasn't like the three bubbles or so-and-so's typing or something yeah you yeah, know? yeah 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 it would just be like mm, you know like oh this conversation conversation was flowing pretty good and then all of a sudden it took five minutes to respond like there's something happening yes yeah yeah exactly yep something something is the foot and like i mean that was even like one of those where like eventually you would like th- this is i'm going like going back into like the dark pits of like my my teenage anxiety but like you know you would you'd be like talking to the the person you had a crush on or whatever and then like someone else would log on and then they would go they would become like slower to respond uh-huh. and you would be like, Oh, you're right. watching the, like, it's like, it's like, I realized that this, this person, this classmate who you just got paired next to in science class, like they just logged on and now, and now, right. There's like, like a lot of like social, like, and it's like, it was weird because you're right. That was like, it was such a thing you could like navigate and watch. And it was like, you felt like you were really reading the wind pretty accurately a lot of the time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's, that's sort of like, like a, like a piece of it as well. Like, and, and I would say like, you know, if you wanted to like, like take this and jump forward in time, like for a period of time, like a public apology on Twitter or something like that was something that like could potentially be a successful uh, like decision, you know, like yeah. I made a mistake and I would like to own up to that mistake and let me write my statement that, it, that can now be communicated to you all that like demonstrates the way in which I am owning up to my mistake. But then this became so required for so many people over such a period of time right. that like the way in which that message was crafted was under a extremely high degree of scrutiny as to like whether or not like well are they properly accepting blame are they properly like doing the right things what are they going to be doing to learn in the future to do better and it's like it's like the idea of a public apology it might be like you know like i'm sorry i messed up you know like yeah like and in the beginning it may be like you know good on them for for apologizing like, right they came out they stepped forward they recognized they messed up but then it was like, as time went on, it was like, well, you can't just use the formulaic, like, I'm sorry, I messed up. You have to expand on, I'm sorry, I messed up. Like, I'm right. sorry, I messed up. When I said these things, I didn't realize the implications of my words. I now have read more into that. I've spoken to other professionals in the community, and I now understand what I could do to be a better version of myself and be more informed in the future. Right. And but then, once people recognize that, like, that's the appropriate formula, it's like, once it becomes formulaic, it's no longer acceptable. And that's the thing. Yeah. Yes. And and so this is this is what I mean. Like, in the beginning, it was fine to say, hi, 
you know, like, yeah. and, and that was, that wasn't something that could be like misconstrued as anything. It's a common way to greet another human being. Right. We know this, but for, for whatever reason, Hey, in text form seemed warmer, you know, it right. seemed more friendly, more inviting, more exciting. You could, or even like, you know, having an exclamation point on the end or something like, you oh, know, yeah. like the subtle oh, yeah. shifts, to, like to get like a, a, Hey, exclamation point, And it was like, Oh my gosh. That makes me feel so good. I know. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, you're, you're happy to see you're me. You're happy to see me. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. I'm a little embarrassed, but yeah. right. 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 Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I mean, uh, the, the, this is like the, the, um, the subtext, you know, so to speak in, in the way that we, we communicate with each other as, as people. And, and I think that that's the, uh, I I'm grateful and I'm happy to see that it feels like, like this, this new platform has certainly provided a huge piece of, of what maybe people, like it feels so much friendlier. It feels so much happier. Yeah. The subtext hasn't been decided. Like, like you can say hi. I think the most comforting to me, the most comforting thing about it to me is like how happy everyone seems to be that it is like more positive that like, it wasn't like that. There is this like oppressive negative feeling about Twitter that lots of people were feeling. Right. And it's just like, Oh, like it was just nice to not be there. You know, right. like that's really good. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm curious. Like it, like what, you're like, because I think like our generation specifically, like millennials are like the ones who are like really living through like the Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, like Instagram, like the the trenches of like that kind of social media. Yes. Like, yeah, I don't know if social media will always look the way it does now, but this is this is like the the grouping of social media platforms that we had when we were growing up and like really going through it. And it'll be it'd be like. I'm so curious whether or not like, you know, when you have like Gen Alpha coming up or like Gen Beta coming up here, like, you know, generations from now, they're like Ugh, millennials are like so divisive about everything. And it's like people will be like, yeah, well, what happened to that entire generation was social media and right. like no one knew the dangers. And like, yeah, they're all like that because they would all get into these crazy arguments on these weird websites. And like yes. people were just like so heated and so determined and so like th this us or them, you know, <laughs> like like it'd be so interesting if like that's like a characteristic of our whole generation to like next generation to like that was like th they're all like that. It's such a thing with them, you know, like those old people. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. I know. I mean, and, and, and it's the thing, you know, I mean, everybody is impacted by, by the, the era of time and technology and development and social, everything that that's mm. happening, you know, the politics of the world at the time. And, and there's no way for it, for it not to impact you. But, you know, I think, I think back, I mean, I bet it's been a couple of years since I first posed this question and I'd be curious to see if your answer would change, but like, um, it's like, would we reach a stage where we're optionally choosing to not use all of the available technology of the day mm -hmm. and and I, I don't mean like you know we go back to to like writing on cave walls and stone right. tablets and stuff like that but like you know we're, we're not using like modern medicine or anything but like you know the the question would be if it's like like you know um yes there is more available yes it can give you more access yes it can do these things but like but i also know that that like for for me personally it's almost like it becomes like a diet type thing again going back to like too much of a good thing it's mm -hmm. like it's like you know like yeah yes i love ice cream no i don't want it breakfast lunch and dinner right you know what i mean and and that's where it's like yes it's incredibly interesting to see all these like like there is the internet is just non-stop there is no way in the world where you could ever ever consume every piece of inf interesting media that there is right you know um and and i guarantee there are things out there that you would love that you haven't even discovered or realized that you would love yet right um along the way and and so it's just like i don't know i mean um like i said i don't i don't particularly have a stance the only thing i could ever come back to with this entire conversation is just like i i could tell that it was impacting me but i also know that i am I am like hypersensitive right. to a lot of things. Like I, I know that like if, if there was like, like I can remember like most of the mean comments that I've received, like since we've been doing super Carlin brothers, right. You know, and it's like, and they, they stick with me. Like, right. I, like I, I mean, they're, they're like this, this weird hoard of treasure that I can't ever like let go of because right. it's like, I feel like they're the things that keep me in check. The people who are, these are the only people who are being real, real with me. Um, and so for me as a result, it's like, you know, I think, I think my withdrawing from it has just been something that has overall been better f for for my own outlook, mm -hmm. uh, which is what it ultimately comes down to. But I am also endlessly curious to hear if any of the little kernels listening out there have adopted threads, threads. And, and what you think of it so far. What type of I have to imagine that eventually there will be a quilt pun 
I feel like oh, that Ben, will, that will... I mean, just within seconds. Oh, oh this already there's, happened. There's quilt threads. There's weaves. There's sewing. There's Amazing. you know, what do you call a grouping of threads? Do we call it an outfit? Like people are trying to like develop the vernacular. You know, right? It's happening. Yeah, right before there's, our there's eyes. There's so much of it out there. Yeah, but that's also probably what I would mark as like what what will um, d- uh, allow this to to gain a measure of success. The fact that it's like such a it's such a simple term. Like whenever somebody's trying to come up with a name for a business, they always want to concoct like the most clever thing ever, and it's like. This is not a clever, well, it both is and isn't a clever name. It's, yeah. It's a simple word that can be applied in a lot of ways. Yeah. And it's um, just like, yeah, you're, um, but I think, yeah, if you're threads, you just got to let the people come up with it. And oh yeah. Do yeah. not try to, yeah. don't try and do it yourself. Like even, even like the phrase retweet, that was like, there was at one point on Twitter, there was no retweet functionality. Like you literally like the, the practice of the day in like 2009, 2010 was to type capital R capital T and then copy and paste another person's tweet. Oh wow. Like with their name, you know, like make sure you put their name on it so that people could tell like retweet this. And like people just understood that meant to me like I'm retweeting this person's thing. Right. right but like right. the word retweet wasn't there. And like the the little circle icon to like immediately do it wasn't there. Sure. You know, yeah, so yeah. it was like that like that that had to be developed and then it, you know, then now it's just a regular thing. Yep. So but just let it organically let it, grow. Let it grow. What what let find? Grow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it'll be it'll be fascinating to see it unfold. I'll be very. This is like another one of those moments where I feel like the prime reason I wanted to talk about it was just to be able to um, mark the data. You know, it's like this is to me. This episode is like writing in a journal. It's like what what I, I'm not trying to say anything. I'm not trying to communicate anything, anything. This is like a data point for me that I can go back to in ten years and be like. I want to see how I felt about it when it first happened. Right. And it's like, I, that's what that it was, is what I feel like we recorded today. It's a piece of information for right. scientific discovery. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so anyway, there you, you go. go. But back. If, if you guys have any thoughts on any of the things that we discussed in today's episode, be sure to let us know. You can email us at popcornculturepod at gmail.com. Uh, otherwise, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash popcornculture. We have an awesome tier mm-hmm. uh, where you can get access to um, after the final pop, the next 15 to 20 minutes of Jay and I talking after each week's episode um, by signing up even just for a single month you get access to the entire back catalog for that whole month and so there's just just a, hours and hours and hours of extra content of, of pop out there for you yep um so again patreon.com slash popcorn culture otherwise until next time pop pop, pop.